Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Christopher Aaron. This is our weekend update on gold and silver prices, taking into account the previous two days of action and looking forward to the week ahead. It's November 22nd. And I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. We are at a critical time frame in the precious metals. If you've been invested in these markets for a number of years or you are just looking to get into these markets, it's very important to pay attention to what's happening and my goal is to bring you the clearest, most precise analysis that I am capable of. I'm a private investor, and this is the system that works for me. And I like to share this with people. I advise some people, and I publish my research on the side. And I thank you for joining me and hope this can be of use to some of you. So every week we start by looking at the action in both metals. I want to start with something a little different. We had a request um, from a viewer and by all means you can leave comments or questions in the box down below. I had a question from a viewer to take a look at the action in gold versus the US dollar. And I believe there was an interview out with Rick Rule recently uh, Rick Rule, a very smart man, very knowledgeable about the markets, and, and he made a statement um, having to do with the fact that gold was going down because the U.S. dollar was going up. And so here we have a chart. We are looking at the U.S. dollar versus gold over the last year and a half. And this is the same time scale. On the top, we are looking at the U.S. dollar index, which is a measuring of the value of the dollar versus a basket of world commodities, uh, excuse me, of world currencies, including the euro, uh, the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc. And on the bottom, we have the value of gold. So you can see fairly clearly here, over the last year and a half, yes, the US dollar has been rising. And almost in opposite, gold has been losing value. And of course, we know silver has been following gold at the same time, moving a little bit more exaggerated usually in each direction. So we are looking here at this dynamic. So as far as the current time frame goes, yes, that is true. But I want people to be very careful of taking a look at one time period and assuming that all time periods are the same, because that is absolutely not true. So there are many examples I can show, and I'm just going to show one right now where this US dollar up and gold down relationship was not so. Let's move this back just a few years in time, 2008, 2009, which was the height of the global financial crisis. Looking again at the exact same chart, we see on the top, once again, the US dollar was rising into 2009, and at the same time, gold rose into 2009. US dollar up and gold up at the same time, in contrast to what we are seeing today. So this is just an example to be very careful when you hear anyone in the mainstream who brings a specific reason and says, this is why this is happening. This is why gold is falling, is falling and gives one reason. Because often that one reason they are attempting to give may only hold true for a very short time frame. And just keep in the back of your mind, markets change and are always in flux. So what I attempt to do is to just show the most clear picture of gold and silver, taking into account everything that's happening right now. The way that we see that is by looking at the price. The price of the commodity shows us the sum of all the participants, all the speculators, all the hedgers, all the miners, even all the manipulators. They all come together and influence the price at a specific moment. So by analyzing the price, we are really filtering out a lot of the noise that happens in the background. So that's why I pay so much attention to these charts because they show what is happening to the fundamentals. So here we are looking at gold getting back down toward those lows from a few days ago. Nothing too 
crazy there. We have this new low that I've highlighted looking at the six month chart of gold. The new low breaking below the July low. For anyone who's new, these colors will become familiar to you if you follow this analysis over the course of the next several weeks. I always use the same colors in every single chart because I believe in using the least amount of clutter necessary to make the point. Backing that out here, looking at the gold mining index over the same time frame. This is the GDX gold mining fund. We mentioned this last time, holding above the lows still. So shown in green here, the GDX is at least giving us a clue in the short run that it is not expecting too much significant decline in gold, at least for the action that ended on Friday. So oftentimes we will see this divergence develop when there is a significant low being put into the price of the metals. Something we are going to be paying attention to a lot as we go forward. Looking at gold here again, now backing out to a full two year time frame. I usually show the one year, but this is two years. And you can see this very clearly defined here in royal blue, this very clear primary downtrend line that we've been in, this downtrend zone and some shorter term patterns setting up within that. But you can see right here that we are getting very close to the bottom of this downtrend. And I would expect to have a bounce here at the bottom unless we are nearing that moment of capitulation where the market is going to break through this downtrend for a final flush, which is something that I do expect at some point over the next six to 12 months. I'm waiting for the market though to show me whether or not that is going to be now. Why is this so important? Here is that same chart backed out to the 35 year time scale. For people who have been watching, I apologize for repeating this chart, but there's a lot of new people who have subscribed and thank you. And I just want to emphasize how important the action is that we're seeing in gold. You're literally watching a historic movement right now of a retest of this 35 year consolidation. And gold is coming back into the vicinity of the previous all time high and that $1,000 mark here. I've explained this chart on a number of other presentations, but just for anyone who's new, we are at this critical juncture right now. And that's why I feel like it's necessary to do these presentations twice a week. Moving on to silver, we are looking at the action here from Sunday night. This is the overnight trading hours on Sunday, which is Monday morning in Asia. And we're seeing some weakness here coming into silver right now as we are presenting this. Silver still above the $14 level, which was the low, however. So we're going to see if silver can hold here above 14. I expect that if gold moves any further lower, silver will follow and break down. Here looking at the silver chart for the last six months, and you can see the primary downtrend that we've been in here shown in blue once again. Um, after this false breakout that we had in late October, we've just had substantial weakness here coming into the later part of November. Now, still, as I said, holding above the lows from a few months ago. So we want to see, does that hold? Does that stay above the August lows? Now, looking at Silver Wheaton, which is the strongest silver miner of the bunch, we have this, what is now being labeled here, I'm showing in teal, teal representing a short term uptrend line that has formed in the price of Silver Wheaton. And Silver Wheaton almost always leads the price of silver in whichever direction it's going to move. So the fact that there's a little bit of um, strength here showing in Silver Wheaton over the last few months indicates to me that this final move down in silver that I think we're watching right now may be the last move down. And I have other evidence for that in some of my other slides. But we're looking for multiple data points here showing trying to confirm whether or not this will be the final move lower in silver. I believe it is. 
Looking again here at silver over the last year, we see those lows coming in right here and holding above that $14 level, at least as this is being filmed. We'll see what happens on Monday, although there is a lot of weakness as we can see here. But we are expecting that to work its way into this wedge. This is another one of these patterns. In addition to the strength we're seeing in silver Wheaton, this is another pattern showing me that the final low is imminent for silver at some point over this next year time frame. I am not going so far as to call a specific day when the final low will come. I don't see a need to do that. I don't like to do such short term trading that that will impact my well-being or my overall financial situation to have to pick the particular day. But rather, if we see this here, this time period here and backing that out, to the 35 year chart. If we see this time period as approaching this long term linear uptrend line here that has been hit multiple times, we are in the window. We are in a window of accumulation here where you can really make some purchases that I believe will be very well valued over the course of the next three to five years when I believe we will see another spike higher that should take us to once again retest that $50 level and then into the future to eventually break that. But that's not going to be in the next year or two. So we're watching that bottom form before we expect that new rise to start developing. Just to sum it up, this is the same as last time because we're basically in the same situation. Gold still holding the low. We're watching the miners diverge in strength here, at least on the short term. Gold looking for that final low between 850 and 1033. Silver retesting 14 as we speak. And should that break, we are looking for that final low somewhere in the 12 to $14 range. I really don't see it breaking much lower than 12 if this breaks at 14. So that should do it for today, guys. Thank you again for joining me. I just want to leave you with this. Um, in this time where there's a lot of hyperbole and a lot of really uh, outlandish claims being made one way or another. Just be wary for people who present themselves as having the absolute truth. If there's one message I want to give, it's that the charts provide us with a very reliable map. And those maps can be used to make money, absolutely, and to time purchases well. However, be careful for anyone who's saying that they have the absolute perfect truth, because it just doesn't exist. Oftentimes, markets will move in a certain direction for no apparent reason. Just because some traders decide to sell, maybe they need the money to buy uh, some groceries or to buy uh, some essentials. Maybe someone decides to buy just because he heard a, a whisper from his best friend and that impacts the price. Or a central bank comes in because it's their time to purchase for an annual purchase. Sometimes there is no fundamental reason why the price moves. So we just need to be careful for anyone who's saying, I have all the reasons. What I here present to you, Christopher Aaron, is a roadmap. And I believe it's the most precise roadmap that I have seen. And I thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next few videos as we try to gauge where this final low will develop here. Have a nice Sunday evening, everyone.